Well, everyone, it's part 19 of San Andreas, and today we're going to take on a brand new Proprieteer. And, of course, it's one that not many people want to deal with, because it's the very guys that threw us into Grove Street without any money or any clothes to begin with. Yeah, we're going to be dealing with Crash today. And this mission was unlocked the moment we stole Mad Dog's rhymes from his house and OG Loke pretty much took the credit for all of his rhymes. Isn't plagiarism fun? That was sarcasm by the way. Anyway, <clears throat> Crash only has two missions in Los Santos. However, in other areas, well, they'll become more and more prominent. Just thought I'd bring that up. So trust me, this is not going to be the last time we're going to be doing any missions for Crash whatsoever. Considering they're hanging that framed murder over CJ's head. Now the mission in question that we're doing... It may bring about an annoying mechanic. Now, let me be blunt. The mechanic that's going to be introduced ends up being introduced in later games. However, this game did it right, whereas the other games that introduced said mechanic that's going to be unlocked with the mission I'm going to right now, well, they did it completely horribly wrong. Especially GTA 4. I'm pretty sure all of you may have a clue of what I'm talking about, but if you don't, I will further elaborate as I complete this mission. But anyway, let's get started with Burning Desire. That's a very punny name, considering of what we're about to do. Hey, Carl Johnson, CJ. Oh, shit. Come on over here, son. Move over, let him sit down, asshole. So you finally found time to drop back. Man, I've been busy. I've been burying my moms, man. Sounds like a fucking excuse to me. Officer Pulaski thinks you're trying to screw with us, Carl. Now you get this straight. We own you. You're ours. We can shit on you from such a height, you'll think God himself has crapped on you. You understand? He better fucking understand. Yeah, he better have. Time to go to work, CJ, and earn your freedom. There's a guy holed up across town. You got that address, Pulaski? Another gang-banging, drug-pushing, cop-killing bitch just like you. We don't like him, and he don't like us. Now, you make sure he never leaves the neighborhood. Not even in a box. Now get the fuck out of here. Did I mention that the all-star cast of characters can be pretty cool, if not awesome at times? And the whole entire bit was one of those crowning moments. I mean, whenever Samuel L. Jackson's added for anything, it just makes it twice as epic. Because Samuel L. Jackson puts his effort into his acting. Some may not like him, but hey. It, I mean, he's made a name for himself for being a very damn good actor. But time for the task at hand, and the task at hand is to get away from the cops because like a moron, I just so happen to attract them, and to go and get the Molotovs at Ten Penny Hashdash for us. We're gonna basically roast us some Vagos. Yeah does not sound right, but still, that's what we're going to do. It's pretty damn bad, considering that we were dragged into Smoke and Ryder's cop missions. Yeah, there are technically cop missions, because Tenpenny paid them a visit. <coughs> oh, and by the way, if you just happen to have grenades, Within your equipment, you're going to have to use the L1 button to switch to Molotovs. If you found Molotovs, 
then you could just go straight to the mission. Or at least one would think that, but the game will force you to find the Molotovs hidden behind the building. You'll just have more Molotovs to work with, that's all. Anyway... <clears throat> Yes, I'm playing country music even though I don't like it. I don't care. It came with a truck, and I don't feel like changing the channel. <laughs> Laziness! Anyway, let's go on ahead and go to the Vagos house in question. I guess we're burning a drug dealer? That's kind of the whole purpose as to why Tenpenny's having us do this? Or maybe we're burning somebody who's making a profit and Tenpenny's not getting any cut in it. Whatever the case is, be careful when throwing Molotovs or any thrown weapon. They will backfire. Trust me, it happens in this part. Anyway, just amen. Voila! Instant fire. Oh, and be careful if you throw something because it can lead to a one or a two star. Especially if the cops just so happen to be in the vicinity. Oh, and if the cops get caught in the blast, it's a three star. Go figure. Uh, yeah. I don't want to waste all the Molotovs. Oh, and that's another thing. If you do waste the Molotovs, you're gonna have to go back and get some more. And get a little bit closer to throw into the window. God damn it, don't underhand throw! Thank you! Oh, make sure you mowed out any Vagos that just so happens to be in your way. Like those guys! And probably the ones that are behind the building. Yeah, those guys! Wait, I think there's another one. Well, there will be once I throw this out the- throw this into the window. God damn it! I don't want to burn myself. Ah! And I burn myself! God damn it! <laughs> oh, by the way, if you do happen to burn yourself, just run. And now the house is going to burn to the ground. Seriously, why can't things ever go my way? But nonetheless, we have to save this girl from being burnt alive. Stay out the window, I'm coming up! Kinda makes me wish I did the firefighting missions. Yeah, I did say I was gonna regret it, but I'm still not gonna be able to do it because I can handle this. I mean, it's just a little fire. Yes, it kinda took some of my health, but hey. I'll be fine. Oh, anyway, come into the left room before you actually go up to see the girl, and you'll acquire $500. Consider that, and something else that we'll be getting once we complete this mission, your reward. Oh, and whatever the Vagos drop. Yeah, again, this is basically a mission for respect and not currency. You there? You okay? Yeah, but those flames! They're too hot! I'm scared! Hold on, it's probably a fire extinguisher in the kitchen. I'll be right back. Oh, and mind you one thing, if you just so happen to have a spray can in your possession when you're going to the kitchen to get a fire extinguisher, you're gonna have to swap that weapon out. Yeah, graffiti can wait. And besides, who would fire aerosol spray on a goddamn flame? So... We can just use the fire extinguisher to get rid of some of the rising flames. And hopefully... Get rid of the flames here. Stand back! Put it out! Put it out! I did! Oh God. Oh, oh crap. Hey, the building's starting to collapse. We gotta get out of here, thanks. Not cool. So we can't go back that way. We'll literally Hold have on, to go through did. the walls of fire. 
Trust me, another mission will do this too. Oh my god, we'll never escape! This is probably the only time we are introduced to this in, well, any mission of Grand Theft Auto. I'm more than sure that 4 and The Battle of Gay Tony and Lost and Dam and Grand Theft Auto 5 does not have this. But Vice City Stories does, and unfortunately, you do not have a fire extinguisher. And it's a rather annoying mission, to say the least. Now, you're going to have to firefight your way through the flames. And make sure that it's low enough for Denise to get out. Yes, that is the girl in question. You cannot leave her. Because she'll just stay behind. Like a dunce. Alright, let's try to fight this fire here. Oh, come on! Oh my god, we'll never escape! Oh, shut up! I'm working as fast as I can. Okay, the fire's gone. I think we can... Oh, right, I'm gonna have to get the fire... Get rid of the fire here in order for to get it. Oh, I... Damn it! Damn it! I left her in the house! Ugh. Okay. You're gonna have to use the fire extinguisher. Oh, you ain't gonna win this! Damn it! The fire came back! And notice how she's not dying! She is sitting right in the middle of the fire! I had no intention of knocking her in there, that was an accident, nor leaving her there first, as a matter of fact. But she is just standing there, blank stare, in the middle of a burning house, waiting for you to put out the goddamn fire. It's missions like these that make people hate escort missions altogether. But I'm sorry, five Molotovs did this to a house. That must be some very potent... Left the damn fire extinguisher up past me. Higher. Ah, oh, you idiot. Just go. I am doing this for a reason, folks. Denise will not move if she sees fire. Hey man, I owe you my life. I was near well, dead there. At for least sure. you came out the you house this time. Up, girl, you want me to take you home? Yeah. Shit, that was rather Please, annoying. Thanks. Well, I can say this. Now it's time to describe the mechanic that I just unlocked. One that pretty much was done absolutely wrong in GTA's 4 and 5. And that is the girlfriend mechanic. I'm telling you this now. I'm only going to show you the location of the girlfriends and how to improve your relationship to with them. Like Denise, for instance, loves drive-bys, loves bars, loves going to the club, and loves driving around, and likes the fact that you're in regular clothes, preferably grocery colors. And she's dateable between 6 and 5 o'clock. This is my place here. Yeah. What's your name? Denise. Denise Robinson. Give me a call sometime. We should go out or something. Yeah, I'd like that. Okay, I'll catch you later, CJ. Oh, and one other piece of advice. Make sure you frequently date Denise. Because if you don't, she'll go on Radio Los Santos and have Julio G make a shout out to you, signifying you haven't dated her in a while. Also, one other thing. She gives you a pimp suit and a car that will max out your sexuality. 
which is actually a good thing considering now that you have the ability to pick up hookers and they pay you for sex. So yeah, this actually is a helpful girlfriend. All the girlfriends in this game are helpful. Unlike the girlfriends in GTA 4, GTA Bound of Gate Tony, and GTA 5. They are nothing more than inconveniences. Just thought I'd bring that out to you. With that said, this is Arvin Man 5 See you guys in part 20.